wanting to thank God for this opportunity to come and to witness and to say the grace. There is a word from the Lord, and that word is found in the gospel according to Luke, chapter 2. I want to read if you're hearing the first seven verses. Luke's gospel, chapter 2. This is the Christmas high season. So we are second Advent, second Sunday in Advent. So we are preparing now for the birth of Jesus Christ. Amen. If you have it, say amen. amen. The word of God reads as follows. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to his own town to register. <clears throat> so Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. <clears throat> He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him, and was expecting a child. And while they were there, time came for the baby to be born. And she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. And she wrapped him in cloths, placed him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. The word of God for the people of God, thanks be to God. All this month we'll be dealing with kingdom promises, just what the kingdom of God has in store for the children of God. Kingdom promises. And under the subset of kingdom promises, I want to talk about today. Amen. Amen. I want to talk about today showing up where you least expect. Showing up where you least expect. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, Lord Jesus, we come saying thank you. Thank you, God, for this time, this space, this place that is meant for preaching. Ask, Lord God, that you make preaching easy in this place. Allow the word, Lord God, to lift from the pages and to flow in this place from heart to heart and rest to rest that we may have a greater understanding and appreciation for who you are. God, you bless us at the early service. God, I thank you. And now, God, I ask for a double portion of your anointing as we come to present what you have for us today. Lord, we love you, and we thank you in advance. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Kingdom promises showing up where you least expect it. I am always amazed, beloved, that no matter what I do, no matter what I say, no matter where I go, I cannot run from God. God is wherever I am. He shows up and shows out wherever I find myself. I am particularly intrigued at all the places where God leaves his mark. The places where he leaves an imprint that is lasting beyond the spiritual moment. The places where God's spirit tends to linger in the midst. You would think that God and all of his infinite wisdom and God and all of his worthiness would dwell only in great cathedrals. You would think that God would dwell only in lofty towers that is speaking to the law of God and that God reigns in the heavenly realm above. You would even think that he would dwell in places that only attempt to mirror his holiness. That God would not have anything to do with anything that is beneath the mirror of holiness. That God would not deal in the trenches and deal in the places where holiness cannot be represented. But if there's anything about God that I've learned and discovered, is that God specializes in showing up when you least expect it. Do I have a witness in here? God specializes 
and it's showing up where you least expect. Let's let's look at the text. Amen. The, the video text, the text, right? Here. Caesar Augustus issued a decree that all the Roman Empire and the known world at that time should be counted. A census was taken to count all of the people. Verse 4 says that Joseph, upon hearing the decree, went up from Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the lineage of David. This is significant, beloved, because he is now drawn to the place where there is the mark of his bloodline. He's now drawn to a place where God is pulling him to by way of senses, but there's another reason why God is bringing him out and bringing him forward. And beloved, it's good to belong to something. It's good when you belong to God and God belongs to you. It's good when you belong to a family and that family loves you back. It's good to belong anywhere. But notice with me, if you will, that Joseph and Mary left to go to the place where he belonged, a place called Bethlehem. Bethlehem means in the Hebrew, house of bread. Was a house of bread. Bethlehem is just a little town, about eight kilometers south of Jerusalem city. Much like of uh, those times and places in Palestine, it was an ancient city that was full of history, but yet Jerusalem, Bethlehem was obscure in nature. Bethlehem, just a small little town right on the outskirts of the big city of Jerusalem. It's a small town, but it holds a lot of history. In fact, many people have lived in the town of Bethlehem only to come to it and then move from it. It's so small that, 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 that people who come to it don't necessarily stay for a long amount of time. In fact, David only used it as a ceremonial city because of its historical connection. And those that were born in Bethlehem, they loved Bethlehem and they tended to die in Bethlehem. It's just like any small town. Either you love it and you live there or you despise it and you disperse from it. Either you love it or you don't. Either you're going to stay or you're not. That's how it was in Bethlehem. It's just a little town. Did I tell you it was a little town? <laughs> just a little town outside of the center city of Jerusalem. It was the house of bread. Early on, uh, it lets us know by scholars that it was an agricultural place that kept up with the times. It had us understand that that Bethlehem was a provider of food for Jerusalem. It was a place that was equipped with supplying food for the big city. And so that was then, but now as we look at Bethlehem in the text, it is now a dried up city. A city that has been written off. A city in which what used to thrive in that city no longer connects in that city. Sound like another B city. Where people have written the city off and people have not considered the historical value in the city. But I'm here today to tell you don't sweat the small stuff. Because God's got something great to show you within the discourse of a small town like Bethlehem. Bethlehem was a city, a small village, that where there was just a little bit of people trying to live their lives and make it do what it do. They tried to live their lives in this small little town. This did I tell you it was a small town? Yet this town, this small town, this obscure place has an important preparatory impact in history. It has an important impact because there was a woman named Naomi 
who live 